よろしくお願いします。皆様おはようございます。Good morning, everyone. I am the artistic director for the IT Triennale 2022. My name is Mami Kataoka. We started off yesterday successfully, and thank you very much those who came to the preview. And I am sure that you enjoyed yesterday and today, and it's been very hot and warm, and each of the four venues are in a distance, and I am sure that、uh, you need to make some effort to be able to visit four of these venues. But as you remember, this This concept still alive can be widely comprehended, and that's the kind of theme that we have brought up today. And you can see the history and culture of the city and the town, and also reflect the artworks. And I hope you enjoy the work pieces. And this morning at the curatorial roundtable, we have actually hundred artists that we have selected this time, and we would like to share with you how it was planned and curated. And that's what we would like to. Introduced to you today. Well, when we think of the significance of still alive, well, that has already been shared in various places, so we will be skipping that part. First of all, when directing an international art festival like this one, we usually form a curatorial committee, and we make researches all over the world, and that was a typical way. And this time, when I was appointed as artist director, we were already in the COVID pandemic, so we had to think how we could achieve an art festival without traveling to other countries. And、um, the year I took tenure as director of Mori Art Museum was the time I was appointed as artist director. So I had to stay in the museum as much as possible. So I thought that it would be better to. Be able to do this in a different way, and I was wondering. Well, when we hosted the 2018 Biennale of Sydney,、uh, we made sure to visit and meet each artist, and that was a time we implemented that method. This time, I gathered. Let's say my friends, my peers, my colleagues, people that I respect, and I asked my peer curators how we could be possibly responding to this theme and find artists that will be responding. And that's why we have gathered curatorial advisors from five different continents. And asked each advisor to recommend over 20 artists, and we shortlisted these artists. And I told the advisors that out of who you have proposed, we will be selecting three to five. Artists, and at the end we were able to do that, and in a very short time we were able to come up with a list of 300 wonderful artists, and I started to create a story based on that. When we think about performing arts together with modern or contemporary arts, actually there isn't so much of an art festival that connects these things, and that's why we wanted to. Come up with a good link between these two different type of arts, and that's why I asked Chiaki Soma, who is also a creator in the former session, to be the performance arts, and、um, she is actually a specialist in performance arts and musical dance. She has experience in organizing these things, and together with her, I asked Keizo Maeda and Akiko Fujii to be the perform. Performing arts advisor, and Chiaki Soma led the new artwork creation, while bringing in existing artwork、uh, was led by the other two performing art advisors. And we also asked、um, Chiaki to also do the work of curator. And for learning programs, we appointed two curators, and the reason is because we wanted to focus also on the learning aspect. 
That's why we got the dialogical appreciation expert Daya Ida, who was also a creator in the previous Triennale. And we also asked him to gather 800 trainers, uh, excuse me, volunteers, and we asked him to organize volunteer trainings. And on top of that, we wanted to think how we could possibly approach to artists from the learning perspective, and I asked Takayuki Yamamoto to make a deep dive research on Aichi. These are part of the learning projects. Today, I would like to cast some questions to the panelists. So to the theme still alive, how do you think you'll be able to respond to this? That's the first question. The second question is now that the exhibit and the performing arts have started, how does the artist that you recommended stand out? Or what kind of changes have you noticed compared from what you initially expected from that artist? These are the two questions I would like to cast to each of the panelists. Okay, from my right side, Martin German, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, Mami. Yeah, I remember it was January 2021 when uh, uh, Mami and me had a Zoom conversation and in Germany it was a lukewarm gray winter. It was a little bit too warm as usual these days. And so I asked myself, still alive, what, what could it be when I heard this title by Onkavara? What could be still alive? Is it the Earth? Because um, it doesn't probably care too much if we humans are going to did disappear from it, or is it, uh, uh, is it the, this, the, the art festival itself, which is a bit under threat? Um, so, yeah, there were so many points one could think of from humanity, macro to micro points, that I decided to approach this theme actually about some personal um, encounters with art I had during these endless screen hours, which we all experienced, sitting in front of a screen, but there were, of course, moments of resonance which one encountered with art. And uh, so I decided that this still alive refers for me mostly to art itself, because art has the capacity and a, and a very specific intensity, which is also often threatened these days uh, from what I would like to call an aboutness. Often art has to be about something, but I don't think that art necessarily has to be about something. I think it's a core quality that it can be many things. Um, yeah, that was actually my, my inner response. And the, the first artist I, I thought of was the artist Lothar Baumgarten, who is um, uh, in the Ichinomiya school. And I don't know if you all saw his work. It's a very mesmerizing, uh, sound-intense, uh, ethereal film, which is also very dark, so it's about this shadow zone it's embracing, and you hear a lot of spurts, and the title is uh, Amazonas Cosmos. So you think what you see is the Amazon, but it's not the Amazon. What you see is actually the Rhine, the, the meadows, the lush meadows near the river Rhine in Düsseldorf. So it was for me a perfect film, uh, embracing a little bit this uh, uh, being here and being elsewhere at the same time, thinking about the others, projecting on the others. Um, so yeah, that was actually my very first uh, um, response, also because Baumgarten is actually an ethnolog, he, he has an ethnological approach to art, and that was very rare in the 70s when Onkavara was working also. Um, it's something else I thought, there is this very famous phrase in uh, uh, Richard Wagner's Parsifal, which is called, here time becomes space. And I think we all experienced this, that time became space. And so I, additionally, I proposed Mami, uh, two artists who mainly work with performance, like Prince Golam and also uh, Anne Imhoff, um, because in experiencing their performance art, time really becomes space. Um, and they both couldn't come due to um, particularly uh, pandemic reasons, but they are also here still present uh, with their works as, as film versions. 
So this, yeah. Thank you. Then let us ask our learning creator, Takayuki Yamamoto. I'll be asking in turns from right to left and right to onwards. While still alive, when we think of this, if you think if you are still alive, you can feel the artworks of the artists. When we think of an art festival, we get to see various artworks of distinct artists. And the art festival itself is something we have to think. And that's the kind of lecture series that we had been conducting. And further, we want to know more about the venue. Where, what kind of city or prefecture is Aichi? That's the kind of project that we carried out. And for Aichi to host and welcome this Triennale still alive, we started to prepare for that since last year's summer, and that's how we started finally started off. When, because this is an art festival, and if we have the word festival in it, we want to make sure that the local people will be happy to host this and get to know various perspectives of how people view the world through artworks. And we wanted to make this kind of stimulus event. And we want the local people to think in that way. And these were what I was thinking during the preparation time. And when we think about festival in the my hometown, we have um, this character called Shoujo during the festival. It's like a big drunkard, and there are around 40 of them, and they walk around every 15, 30 minutes, and they are the moving drunken giants. And I hope you get to see them, and if you tease them, they will chase you around. And actually, they hit you with a stick, but this time it's a festival, so we restricted them. And this is a traditional festival in the Arimatsu district, and there's this character called, it's a fictitious character called Shoujo that came from China, and it has a red face. And actually, the Aichi Triennale 2022 red heart logo mark, the red color comes from the red faces of Shoujo. Well, it's just by coincidence, right? Okay, now let's ask Chiaki Soma. When Mami Kataoka approached me and I heard the word still alive, I thought, <laughs> it's about myself. The reason is because I really thought I would be dying in the previous Aichi Triennale 2019. And we did overcome that. So I was thinking how we could come up with a new art festival. And that was one of the biggest themes that I was working on. In the previous curator essay, I wrote like this. There is no artwork that does not harm anyone. Then we can say that there is no art festival that will not harm anyone. And at the end of the passion play, we simply pray and hope that things will quietly reopen and people will reunite. And that's what I wrote. And when I said to reopen, I was thinking to reopen what has been closed and to have people to reunite and to re-meet the artist's work. And that's how we did work. Then later, we went through the pandemic. And the word reunite started to have a completely different meaning. No one expected that. But again, under a new context, we started to be able to cast new kind of questions to society. Of course, with the pandemic, museums and the performing stages had to be closed temporarily. It's already been two two years after the outbreak and we are getting used of it, but many things lost its control, many things got into confusion, and everything was in chaos. 
That's why in this time's art festival, I wanted to think how we could retune the time that ended into chaos. And I think that is one of the biggest themes. And to come up with a new reopening and new reunion, Mami Kataoka gave us this theme, and that has helped us. And of course, we have to remember about on covers still alive, and it's been like 10,000 years since human beings or this earth has been born, and it's been 50 years since the still alive of Onkara, and how can we bring back the performing arts that was organized 50 years ago? How can we bring this back to stage? And of course, in a pandemic, it's going to be very risky to have many performers to stand on stage. And that is why there are many cello artworks this time. But that doesn't mean that we are not mesmerizing. In fact, we were able to bring various historical things. We were able to summon this. For example, Trajal Harel's performance yesterday and today, those who have watched do understand. So you see Trajal there, but many things have been summoned or convened. And that's the kind of performing arts that we try to achieve this time. And another thing is the world of VR, virtual reality, reality. Apichatpon Vira Shetakul's work and also Taiwanese artist Xu Jiaowei's work at Ichinomiya are being introduced. Even if the artist or the performer himself can't come, we can also have the visitors have a physical experience. And that's what I wanted to prove. And Zhao Wei's work that you will be seeing in Ichinomiya proves that he never came to Japan, but together with the team in Japan, well, I think this is applying to other artworks as well, but you get to see the texture and the dramaturgy that can be felt. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let us now ask Rana Davenport. Thank you, uh, Mame Kadaoka, for bringing us all together with such generosity, thought, rigor, and passion. Last time I traveled in the world outside of Australia, it was to the Aichi Triennial 2019. So, in fact, the last three years has been bookended by this project, and of course, the um, and much has happened. <laughs> for projects of this scale and ambition, the ultimate challenge is to ensure both the project's poetic charge and its relevancy to its time. It, as an expansive conceptual motif, Still Alive has as it, its heart one artist, on Kawara, and his particular and enduring engagement with the act of making. His 900 telegrams were a pure universal declaration of existence. The content of the telegrams could parallel the intent of art, a poetic and bodily act of in response to the knowingness of being alive, an unrelenting conscious gesture of being human. When Mami first shared her curatorial ideas, I immediately considered this concept in light of the radical insistence of Aboriginal Australian artists in their undertaking of the journey of determination towards political justice and recognition within a frame of deep time. Iwani Scarce honours the facts of the desecration of her ancestral homelands in, in um, South Australia on Cockatha land through the nuclear tests carried out by British and Australian governments in the late last century in her vast and exquisitely beautiful installations of hand-blown glass bush yams. Her new work for Aichi, exquisitely installed, echoes the radiant blue hue seen in the radioactive sky. Kayleen Whiskey lives in her birthplace of Indulkna, an Anangu community of about 300 people in the arid APY lands of South Australia. She entwines both Chokopa, the spiritual and ancestral stories, and her beloved heroines from pop culture to offer a rapturous declaration on women's leadership, solidarity, and resourcefulness. These are feminist anthems, audacious and defiant. I also thought of Iranian-born Hoda Afshar's examination of human fragilities within the geopolitical sphere and her determination to give voice to the invisible. 
her work remain results from the research she undertook in Australia's offshore former detention centre in Manus Island in Papua New Guinea. Many of the asylum seekers, all men, were detained indefinitely and remained even after the centre closed in this lush, tropical limbo incarceration zone. In the artist's own words, these men bear witness to life in these camps, from the death of friends and dreams of freedom to the strange air of beauty, boredom and violence that surrounds them in this land. And finally, I thought of Jacobus Capone's video, Forewarning, Sincerity and Symbiosis, that documents the artist's six-week durational performance undertaken in the plantation forests in Shiga Prefecture, also in 2019. Despite this wholly unnatural natural environment, the figure mo moves with quiet and symbolic steadfastness in an effort to honour every tree. This is a passage of reconciliations and farewells. Arigato. Arigato Thank you. Let's move on to learning curator Daya Aida. Well, Chiaki Soma and myself, from the previous Triennale, we have been serving as curator. And I personally never expected that. And I'm pretty much surprised that I got the chance again. And that's why I was surprised but very happy. Well, the word still alive when that was announced um, by Mami Kataoka, I thought about the presence of the volunteers. In 2005, when we had the Aichi Expo, well, I think that was a time the volunteer groups started to be active. And in the previous 2019 Triennale and this time's 2022 Triennale, where we asked them, we found out like 40 to 50 percent of volunteers are new volunteers and the other 50 percent are experienced volunteers. So I think we can say that there has been a good metabolism of the volunteers and at the same time we are seeing more people wanting to devote their time to protect the pr tradition and also to help us out and I was um, happily surprised with that as well. While the art festival continues to transform, well, we physically continue our activities and things are ongoing for especially the local people and these volunteers and I was thinking what could we do for these people and that was the past three years. Talking about the history, well, in the previous Triennale and this time, we have um, brought in a method called the dialogical appreciation. Well, this started in 1980s and 1990s. Um, it was established at the MoMA, New York. It is based on the visual thinking methodology. And at the time, in those days, New York, New York still had a lot of slam areas and MoMA was simply for high so society kids and those were children where parents could afford the art books and there was this discussion that um, does that mean that people who can't afford this are not do not deserve to appreciate art now when we think of the context of the art, we think that there is also a context that can be generated by those who view the art. This also includes psychologists and actually research was conducted, bringing in several thousands of people. And through these researches, this methodology was established and this dialogical appreciation was brought into Japan in 1990s and it has spread out. 
And today, it is included in the Japanese Ministry of Education's teaching curriculum for arts. And it says that a dialogical appreciation must be included in art. And when we have various people, many people, including art specialists and experts, and also those non-experts in the art festival, we want people to view and appreciate these arts, and this, in this meaning, the dialogical appreciation is something that is well fit. And we have hundreds of volunteers going through the training, which is very impressive for me. And of course, I stand also as a lecturer, but I'm really moved seeing many volunteers going through the trainings, and by repeating these training activities, we will be able to have the art encountering other people through dialogue. And dialogue can be used as a means of communication. And this exactly represents what still alive is. That's what I have been thinking throughout the time. Thank you. Let's now ask Takuya Tsutsumi, contemporary art curator. Hello, my name is Tsutsumi. When I listened or heard about Still Alive announced by Mami Kataoka, I think you made an announcement in the end of 2020. At the time, I was not appointed yet. Then, I think it was in March 2020 when COVID outbroke in Japan. And I was a freelance at the time organizing exhibitions, but many of my works were cancelled and I had no work. That's the kind of experience I had. And I just happened to find a job post at a local government to screen or examine the applications made um, to receive subsidy. And during my break time, I think on one of the online media, I saw Mami appointed as art director and setting forth the theme. And I found the theme very smart. That was my first impression. Because this is an art festival in Aichi, and that's why Onkawara's conceptual title is here. And the artwork, too. And it started from that kind of nuance. But we were already into the COVID pandemic. I think that's the second layer in my thoughts. And the third layer was, well, because I was not appointed yet as curator at the time, but we still have to remember there was this previous Aichi Triennale three years ago, but Aichi Prefecture still has the intention and will to host the art festival. And that's why I thought um, the theme this time was very well fit. And somehow, well, I became part of this art festival. And there's this concept found, formed by Mami Kataoka, and you can find the instructions on the web. And I followed those instructions. And I try to recommend and propose young artists in Japan, those who don't usually have opportunities to have their artworks being exhibited. Thank you. That was all from my end. Thank you. Let's now ask Tobias Ostranda. Floor is yours. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Mami. This has been a wonderful experience that um, really began in deep COVID, and, um, and it was a really interesting time to, to think about what it meant to be alive and, and how to, to share ideas around art across time and space. Um, for me, um, I ended up thinking a lot about um, Ankawara, or thinking about Ankawara's quickly, quickly led me to thinking about articulations of time and, and what does time mean now. And, and then focusing even further in on the piece itself, um, I Am Still Alive and the Telegram, 
it, um, I was very intrigued by you know a telegram, particularly when he was making the pieces. You know, was is a form that addresses immediacy, um, uh, uh, the the moment, um, and also historical events. Usually, a telegram would be sent. You know that a war is going on, or your child has been born, or you know something that um, documents. So it relates to um, a historical time, but at the same time, the content that he sent, "I am still alive," talked about physical time. You know the the body um, processing time and and human mortality. So it so this kind of this kind of discrepancy between historical time, physical time, and then. The telegram itself has a date and a time on it when it's received, but you don't necessarily know when it was sent. So the person who sent it may no longer be alive. So this kind of play between um, temporalities really interested me. And, um, and thinking about um, artists who play with slippages of time that often, um, and the artists that I, many of the artists I worked with um, engage historicized aesthetics, like um, many, um, like, Leonor Antunes revisits um, designers um, um, from modernism and reinvigorates um, their legacies in the present. She makes her work from investigations, kind of deconstructs and, and, and through her research recreates them. Um, someone like um, Andre Kamatsu is, is very much um, from his Brazilian context, um, thinking about uh, constructivist traditions in, um, in painting, but also in architecture, and showing how those have evolved over time and responding to kind of the political and social realities um, uh, of Brazil today. Um, um, or, or an artist like um, Pablo Davila from Mexico. I mean, his, he has three pieces that articulate very distinct notions of time. This large screen here is, it's a sequence of, of, of um, light and um, pixels that when the sequence finishes, it will be over a million years, you know, beyond human time. And then he has an audio piece that um, kind of comes in this rhythmic uh, um, three minute loops that sort of reference the breathing of the body, so physical time. And then he has these screens that have flickering um, um, uh, images, or, um, and that talks about sort of minuscule time, so um, beyond um, our perception. Um, uh, so playing with these different ideas and, um, and, and inviting artists who, who really think about historical and physical and the, and the sensuality of the body positioned in time um, was my interest with Still Alive. Thank you. Let me hand it over to Akiko Fuji. Thank you. Well, when I heard about the theme, Still Alive, well, actually, Aichi has hosted the Triennale several times already, and I thought that every time we have the Triennale, we always have the perfect matching theme. That means even those who are not necessarily interested to art would be encouraged to feel something or resonate from the art. And every time the art director will come up with a theme in such a way. And this time's theme, Still Alive, was so timely because with the pandemic, um, the word, I'm still alive, became to have become to have a meaning like greetings. So that's why I thought this was really a perfect theme. And even those who usually don't visit museums were able to resonate with this theme and find it interesting. And I was thinking these things. And reading Mami Kataoka's instructions, I thought about artists that deal with language or words. The first person I thought of was Adachi Tomomi. She is known as a voice performer. But it's not only that. Actually, she also treats language 
as a tangible thing. And she makes artworks from those concepts. And I thought it was interesting to recommend her. And other than that, I started to recommend other artists also like Shiomi Mieko and I wanted her to be part of this triennale and I should have thought about her at the very beginning and that's why I proposed Shiomi Mieko because she's an artist following the Fluxus style. At the same time, she also has created many musical performances. And I thought I wanted her to also come up with some artworks, including poetry and words, because she does have that kind of artworks. Another artist I thought of was Wago Ryoichi. He is different from Shiomi Mieko and Adachi Tomomi. He's a different type of artist. He uses Twitter to share his poems. And he uses familiar expressions for us. Perhaps it is not poem, but he communicates these poems using daily life language. That is what he does. And that's why I recommended these artists. Thank you. Let me now ask Shihoko Ida, and um, I want to introduce about her more. She was involved in the previous triennale as well as the one in 2013. This time she is the chief curator leading the curatorial team. And we also have another person over there, Sei Kashiotsu. The two of them have been guiding everything and controlling the budget as well, and converting the bumpy situation into a round aesthetic formation. She's a wonderful person. Thank you. Well, my response to Still Alive was when we think of to live, we have to think on how to continuously live. And I came up with the nine sub-themes under the main concept still alive and started to think how I could respond to this. And I thought that, of course, I am not the only person forming everything, and today we don't have some all the creators here, but we are forming a team. So I thought I should be the one to sew and stitch between the gaps and propose different kind of artists. And among those, to live, or how to survive, or how to vanish, how we circulate. This is what I thought. And it's not an online information that we can approach to, but I thought how we could possibly offer physical experience. And that's the basis on my choosing some artists. And for example, Sasamoto Aki, who performed today in the afternoon, and she is a person uh, within contemporary art performance. She also brings in words. And I also propose, I think this was an artist proposed by Martin, Anne Inghoff. She um, blended in a closed skate rink and youth culture that kind of decays, which could even imply death to some extent. And artworks that bring a sense of reality was what I thought uh, would be good to bring in. And going back to my idea of sewing or patching these ideas relates to what Mami said, combining performing arts and visual arts. Outside Japan, there are various complex art festivals. And what I found interesting here in Aichi is that Aichi does have a curated museum, and on top of that, at the Triennale, the local architecture 
also exhibits artworks. These two are being blended in, and it's like a martial arts thing. So that allows those who are experts and those who aren't experts in creation, curation, to come up with this. And I will mention about other artists in the latter questions, but I would like to share with you some basic concepts I had in my mind. As being introduced earlier, together with Akiko Fuji and Keizo Maeda, I was also involved in the second Triennale 2013. That time I was just one of the creators, so I was just happy um, doing my limited job. But at the previous in 2019 and this time in 2022, I have been appointed as chief curator and together with Sei Kashiyotsu, we worked in a pair. So when overlooking everything and trying to embody Mami's vision, I wondered how we could guarantee the sustainability of Aichi's project. I thought that was my mission. So how can we survive? That is exactly our theme as human beings, and also it implies the sustainability of the project. Because regularly held exhibitions like Triennale, Biennale, I believe that the role in society of these exhibitions is to measure the time. And in the Triennale 2013, one of the creators, Louis Biggs, defined this to measure the time. And including this and the theme still alive, I thought how we could bring in the uniqueness and the sustainability and to blend these two things into one. So to make sure things that will be unique to this time's Triennale and at the same time elements that will allow us to have sustainability for future art festivals and bring in the learning as well as the performing arts. And these are the ideas I had in mind to recommend the artists. Thank you. Um, the balance between my left and right is not equal, so the remaining comments will be from Shimabuku, Fumiko Nakamura, and Keizo Maeda. Hello, my name is Shimabuku, curatorial advisor. As everyone says, with the COVID and also the invasion into Ukraine, the title Still Alive has various meanings. I personally, actually, when I heard about this theme, it's not due to COVID, but I happened to um, lose many people, my beloved ones, and that's why I found the word still alive kind of ironic because many people passed away around myself at the time. That's my first impression. I knew that uh, Still Alive was on Kawara, the legendary artist's um, concept. Still, it sounded a bit ironic to me, and I thought for several days, and then come, came to think that those who passed away are still alive because their artworks are still existing. That's what I started to think. And among those that I will be recommending out of the 20 artists, I thought to include as much as possible the deceased artists. I am appointed, have been appointed as curatorial advisor, but I am not an expert curator because I am myself an artist. And in the first Aichi Triennale, I also had my artworks being exhibited. But I also have some affiliation to Aichi. And I was thinking, why did Mami choose me? Of course, I am a Japanese. So that's why I thought I should come up or recommend artists that Mami wouldn't know. And I tried to bring in many artists in onto the list. And I was happy when Mami said, I don't know this artist. So those deceased are still alive. 
the power of art that survives and the kind of art that's not to live. These are what we need. That's what I was thinking. And here at the Aichi Art Center, well, actually, um, out of what I recommended, uh, five artists were selected. And first is Robert Breer. He's a deceased American artist who used to live in Paris. And this artwork, it's a bit confusing, this white object that looks like a big marshmallow, and those oldies in Japan would probably think about the Obaku anime character, but actually this moves slowly. So please go back to the venue to find this. It's very slow, but it moves. And beside that, you see a worn sponge, two sponges, like a packaging material. This is also part of the artwork, and it really moves slowly. And when you get to know that this moves, you suddenly find that this is living, or you have this sense of a feeling that it's adorable. So I encourage you to watch, uh, go and see this. And another person, Oshiro Kazu. I think you saw this artwork with many speakers, but they are not actual 3D speakers that are canvas painting and you have to lie down to see this but something like the steel frame is a canvas so it's very light and at the same time it's very accurate and you would find it difficult to find that it's an artwork and the more he painted this the more it doesn't seem like an artwork rather it just looks like speakers and steel frame and to try to make yourself vanish that's another way of living i thought another artist miwa mitsuko she is based in Nagoya and she has engaged in art for 40 years, but she never had her artwork exhibited in the Aichi Art Center. And I'm very glad that we were able to have her artwork being exhibited this time. So some of her artworks were made 30 years ago, and for the first time she herself had this exhibited, even the one on the top, and her artworks were sleeping in the warehouse for around 30 years, being kept, and we were make, able to make them alive. Thank you. Now over to you, Fumiko Nakamura. Unlike Shimabuku, I found the word still alive very positive. I thought it was a bright message and I was moved. Of course, I know Onkawara is an artist from this area and the message or the theme came from him. And we can feel and perceive this theme from multiple perspectives. Art to create things and even the trust or reliability to an art exhibit can be felt and that's what made me felt happy. And I personally thought about this concept and always kept this in mind while working healthily in this curatorial team. In the world of art, it is sometimes said that the world of art is black and pessimistic. But as much as possible, I wanted to be healthy, both physically and mentally, to be preparing for the art festival. And we try to share this healthy message among ourselves, and that's how we were able to come up with this festival. Now, in terms of responding to the theme still alive, I have been personally interested into our brute or the outsider art. And among those, I recommended Kodera Yoshikazu and Masuyama Kazaki. They are based at a welfare care facility, and I am very glad to be able to endorse these two artists. Still Alive from Onkawara itself is an evidence of being alive. When we think of people living in a welfare welfare care facility, to create things is part of their happiness, but it's not just only that, but through their artworks, they are being able to connect themselves to society, and the artworks will also help them to show their presence in 
society. So it has critical meanings. So to live and to make things or to create things really show a close link through the concept still alive. And I was very glad to be able to introduce these artists. Another big feature of this art festival is that it's not just only meant for artists or specialists in plastic art, but we have also involved musicians, poets, and people with the traditional craft background. And that is why when introducing these people, we can also have our root and outsider art and have a good relationship or distance among ourselves. The theme still alive is a universal concept and because or thanks to this we were able to bring in various artists from different living conditions or environment. And in that way we were we hope that we can show these essences to the visitors and it has been a good opportunity. Thank you. During the first curator meeting, Fumiko Nakamura said, I want to be prepared with everyone healthy. And everyone kept this in mind. And we hope that, uh, well, actually, at towards the end of the 73rd day, we can carry this out healthy. And last but not least, Keizo Maeda. Um, actually, yesterday and today, there has been a concert of Steve Reichi, and he has been very busy, but thank you for coming. Hello, I am Keizo Maeda. So I am in charge of the performing arts, and together with Chiaki Soma and Akiko Fujii, the three of us have been working as a team. And um, we were appointed by Mami Kataoka to prepare in this field. In the second Aichi Triennale, 2012? No, it was 2013. The second Aichi Triennale's theme was awakening. I remember well, that was a time we had the earthquake and we also had issues surrounding the nuclear power plant. But time has passed since then. And this time we have the still alive. And I was thinking various things when proposing the program. But in fact, our land, our earth, continues to shake. And as Shimabuku said, we are living now in a very tough time, and that's what I really feel too. Amid such situation or environment, well, yesterday and today, well, today from 3 p.m., there will be a performance by Steve Reich. I've been engaged with him for a long time, and is this really good to have him part of the Aichi Triennale? And I'm honored to be able to have him. And two days ago, well, actually, Steve himself is in U.S. and he hasn't come to Japan, but I contacted him. And Steve Reihi really vividly responded and reacted to Still Alive, that Mami stated. And he is saying that He's really touched and moved to have his performance being shown in Aichi. And two days ago, we had some communication over the email. That's what he shared with me. And people in Aichi probably know this. Steve Reihi actually composed a music called Nagoya Marimbas. And he has a very close tie with Aichi. That is why I am very happy to be able to feature him. I am personally glad, and that is why I would like to encourage all of you to be exposed to Steve's artwork. And together with Shihoko Ida and other members, well, they have been helping me out, and we also have Laurie Anderson. 
I know this artist from the 1980s. In the 20, 2005 or 2005 Aichi Expo, we also featured Laurie Anderson. And it's been over 15 years since then. And having said that, well, Aichi Triennale started in 2010 as a legacy or successor of the 2005 Aichi Expo, and that is why the more I wanted to recommend um, Laurie Anderson. And here in the Aichi Art Center, there's this artwork called To the Moon. It is an installation and a VR artwork uh, with Huan Shinchen. And this originally started um, as NASA's Artist in Residence project, and this is part of an advanced or an applied version of the original project. In that sense, for Lori, her connection with Aichi is not the first time. And we can see the relationship between Lori and Aichi being established already. And this time we can update this concept and her artwork under the theme of Still Alive. That is why I really look forward to see how visitors react to her artwork. Thank you. The second question to the panelists are, well, what was your impression seeing the finished artworks, especially the artists that you recommended, and how do you see the dialogue being carried out between the artists you recommended and other artists? Martin, over to you. Yeah, first, thank you again for this question. Um, above all, I have to say, I think it's an absolutely out stunning, amazing edition of the uh, Aichi Triennial for, for, for many reasons, especially for experiences with artists I never heard of, I, 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 I didn't know. And that was very, very beautiful for me. And I think every venue has its own character. Uh, if we think about this show as a buddy, then I really love how, how this exhibition is whispering, how it's shouting, how it's, um, how it's tender, how it's soft, how it's hard. And um, I think also that this exhibition is very, very political. And it's political in the way how it trusts into art as an agent of change. And um, there was another artist I brought in, Marcel Brotars, and actually his work, there's, it's always about the relation between the poetic and the politic. And I think that, that art here really shows what it can do, but thought from form and not from themes. And that's, that's, that's brilliantly done. I, I also think it's a, it's a show which hovers a lot of hope. There's kind of a subtext of hope. And yesterday we also spoke about it. There's this non-cynical approach. So you also have the idea that it's a very upright exhibition. And, and this is very feels very beautiful. And above all, I think it, the show connects Japan with the world, and that's also a very particular quality, which I think was also important after the, the last edition, that the people here can feel a connection to the world. So these are my um, impressions, and I, I only can say that I feel with the artists I proposed, they are in, 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 uh, in good companion, so to speak, and I'm, yeah, I have to congratulate really the team, the curatorial team, because it's really fantastic. So I'm happy to could for a small contribution. Thank you. Takayuki Yamamoto, please. Well, in the research to get to know more about Aichi and to deep dive into this, um, Majima Tatsuo's team featured the three historical heroes in Aichi and make a research and to come up with a wall art. That's what we decided at the very beginning. And the rest of it is up to the participants. When we think about joint project or workshops, Usually, it is used for um, the artist to come up with an image and the volunteers will be the ones to realize that. But this time, Majima Tatsuo is the one always to try to sort out the participants' ideas. So from input out to 
output. Actually, all these processes can be experienced by the visitors and the participants. That's something very interesting. And actually, even today, we had a very frequent um, chat communication over the line. And by the way, various people have been participating into this, and these people have been posting about Triennale on social media, and it's like a pyramid scheme, and I personally enjoy watching that. And Chiaki Soma, it's your turn now. Well, when we think of I am still alive, I think people tend to focus on the stool part. But we have to also concentrate on the I am part, because during On Kawara's time, when he meant I am, of course this I represents On Kawara's conceptual artist, and at the same time, it's been 50 years since the contemporary value world. So when we think of I am still alive, I, 50 years from now, what does it mean? And I thought, we needed to have artworks that represent this. That's why I recommended Watanabe Atsushi's I Am Here project. I had been strongly recommending this because there are people who can't come to museums for some reasons. For example, they are reclusive and can't go out of their homes, or people who can't come to public spaces for some reasons, or people who have been invisible in society. When these people say, I am or we are, well, I thought how we could make these concepts visible in the exhibition, and I think this is important. At the same time, when we say I am, of course we are human beings, so it represents myself as a subject, but at the same time, how can we try to bring in or gather the existence of presences other than human beings. And out of the curated works myself, towards the latter half, we have the Api Chapon Vira Takun's VR work and performance artwork of Momose Aya. And these will be towards the end of the Triennale, but I would like to encourage you to have appreciate these things. Thank you. Then Rana, uh, over to you. I also wanted to thank uh, Shihoko and Seka and Obayashi-san for your great faith and work. Uh, Still Alive is powerful, prescient and personal. Uh, what has moved me in the last few days as I've witnessed these hundred artists is the ebb and flow across artworks, the threads of seriality and sensuality, materiality, abstractions, insistence, poetry and grace. I expected to see great art, but these are the three surprises. Firstly, it's the stretch of time and uh, the spirits who have gone on before us, um, not only from Onkawara, but also Martel, uh, Marcel Brutus, Lotha Baumgarten, um, Arakawa, um, Madeline Jins, and the adorable, thank you for that, Shimabuku, um, Robert Breer, and, um, and Koi Roji, who's actually exhibiting at my museum now. Um, how these temporal resonances of their work is still an active force at play today. Broodhouse's video of writing in the rain will stay with me for a very long time. Secondly, I found the conversations, the call and responses between the works quite thrilling, uh, such as between the spiritually inflected woven natural fibres of Mary Dapolani and the architectonic gestures of Arakawa, or between the arresting paintings of Mohammed Sami and the vast allegorical tapestries of Deirdre Brackens, or Kaz O'Shira's Trompe l'oeil painting sculptures nudging up against Fanny Saren's glorious abstractions, or the flow between Laurie and Anderson and Hua Xingchen's To the Moon and Watanabe Atsushi's The Moon Will Rise Again. And I thank you for the inclusion of Steve Reich with his transcendent concept that made me think about the exhibition in entirely new ways. Thirdly, it's the shape of space. The polyspatial aspect of these kinds of projects, such as Aichi Trainel, um, set up new propositions of sight and meaning such as the evident in the intimate connection to place seen in the works of Mit Jain and the breathtaking work of Aki Inomoto in Aramitsu and Barry McGee's vivid transformations of public utilities in Ichinomiya 
and the perfectly located works of Delcy Morales, Glenda Leon, Tuan um, Andrew Nguyen, and Nikau Hinden in Tokoname. The Astigate's near 20-year connection with Tokoname is only just getting started. As he said yesterday, the restoration of the house is a gift, an action, a return, a future. In some ways still alive, maybe a motive for any thoughtful and heartfelt gathering of art, actions and experiences. Yet despite the pandemic, despite the maelstrom of global tensions and despite this heat, these works of, in totality register a celebration of the possibility of art and an energised act of living and a gesture of hope. You have the floor now. Thank you. Well, I stand on the learning side. That means we have to believe in the creativity of the visitors and audience. Um, that kind of period has started for me. That's how I feel it. And of course, the artists' creativity are impressive. And at the end, but we need people to view that. And when the audience or visitor creates something or starts talking about that artwork, that's the first time the an art will be completed or established. So I was always thinking how we can create a healthy and creative show and that has been my main interest and that means we continuously weave things in various contexts we connect things sometimes this connection could be something with things that have nothing to do with an art and we try to connect to your own life or to your own daily living and to try to bring a new meaning to the artwork. Perhaps we can at the end come up with a story that artists themselves never expected and this kind of rich relationship is being created and that is exactly a big potential that we can feel in a big triennale like this one. And as Fumiko Nakamura said earlier, I am very much interested um, to the R brute. Because I think the word outsider well, derives from the uh, meaning that it is the peripheral of the orthodox art work or history. But when we think of the creativity which is out of the, not the orthodox part and when we think of trying to connect this, well, that is actually what is being requested to museums and art festivals. And on the 12th floor today, um, there is this exhibit of Kodera and uh, Masuyama. And if you have some time later on, I hope you watch the documentary video as well and find various ways of weaving things. And I hope you recall that later. Thank you. And please be brief. Um, Takuya Tsutsumi, over to you. Well, I have proposed um, artists that have their exhibits in the towns. And during the preparation, I felt that the Bisai area, which, which is in Ichinomiya, so you take a 10 to 15 minute ride on a bus from Ichinomiya station. Um, we have um, Zhao Fei's artwork in Kunishima Company Littered, and Shiota Chihara's work in Nokogiri, and Leona Antunes and Amukai Eriko's work in Tsutsumi Kaikan. Well, this was not intentional, but I found out that these artists are all female female artists and from 4 p.m. today and um, there is Mukai Eriko's performance and all the performers are women. It just happened to be by chance and it's not only that but these area, the Bisai area used to be very famous for textile and weaving. There are a lot of textile industries and in the old days a lot of women from the rural areas came to this area to get employment and to work in the textile industry and it just happened 
to be overlapping with the history, and that's what I found to be interesting. Thank you. And by the way, Takuya Tsutsumi um, has also been engaged of the uh, signage and the signs, although he's a creator. Of course, uh, we had a designer to do the sign logo, but uh, it was Takuya to decide where and how to have the signs being located, and he has taken a very big responsibility. Thank you. So it's now Tobias, your turn. Um, I, uh, in terms of my impressions, I was very struck by um, how well cited everything is. You know, um, considering we weren't asked to um, think, we didn't know the spaces where the works we were proposing would be um, placed. Um, ev there was such a clear dialogue between the work and where they were positioned, whether they needed a white cube or they needed a historical context. It, it was, um, and then seeing the works, even though, you know, the works I, the, that I didn't know, I, I, I could find a new relationship to the space, or I could understand that there was a reason that this work was here in, in each of the places. And, um, and, and that became very clear um, and, uh, as, as we moved through the different um, sites. Um, I was also very struck by um, the sense of still alive in um, keeping traditions still alive um, across cultures, you know, I mean, across many contexts. You know, the, the idea of um, activating um, older knowledge systems or making systems in the present uh, and, and keeping them alive in that sense. Um, but um, that was very consistent, or that was, I felt that throughout um, the, the show. Um, and, and also I was, the, it's a very embodied exhibition. You feel some things are felt visceral, like some images are visceral, so, but it's a very phenomenological um, exhibition in the sense of like your, your body, your senses um, in, are, are responding. Um, you, you have this sense of corporally being alive in, with them in a, in, a, in a very interesting way. And um, I think that's all that I... And, and just the sense of like what Martin was saying, that this, this lack of cynicism or this, um, it's almost like living through everything we've lived through recently, there's no time, um, there's, no, it's, there's no time for irony, there's no time for cynicism, it's time to celebrate, it's time to really feel what it means to be alive, and that really comes through, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Akiko Fuji, the floor is yours. Actually, I had been thinking the same thing as Tobias. I have only um, seen little of the exhibits, and the performing arts is something I'll be uh, watching moving forward. But I really do feel that um, to live, or the concept of living is being well expressed. Well, when we think of exhibits and performing arts, you can really experience the art and you can feel the reality with your own body and your mind. And sometimes that gives you an unexpected benefit. Or oh, there are things that you knew about it, but the hidden feelings end up being recalled by appreciating artwork. And there are diverse things in the world. You know that there are many things in this world that dif is different from your ideas. You know about it, but this tends to be forgotten, and the artwork or performing arts help us remind about this. And these respond to each other, and that's what we can experience in an art festival. Thank you. Shihoko Ida, over to you. Well, I have been um, guiding the press tour yesterday and today. Time really flies. And I know, of course, which artwork is located where. But again, I do feel that and believe that this has been a very good exhibition. And um, what I'll be mentioning will be echoing to what Martin and Tobias said. Well, this artist um, is not an uh, artist exhibiting in this time. Trenale, we have this artist called 
Simran Gill, based in Singapore and Australia, and uh, what she said has been staying in my mind for 10 years. And I recall this in this time still alive. She says that how can we try to express things uh, politically without being political? And I think that's part of the, the curatorial behavior we have been able to express this. Like Iwani Scares, Tanya Lukin, Link Luter, and Marcel Broter's artwork piece have been a good example. And Roman Ondak, Jimmy Robert, Hoda Asha have also been contributing to these behaviors as well. And how and why have we started to see this trend? Well, I was thinking about the political nature in our daily lives and, of course, the patriarchy and the colonialism that has silenced the politics. In this way, I, Ilan and Miata Asuka have been able to express this. And at the same time, not just serious, but uh, with the positive power and exclusive power, we see artworks of Kayleen Whiskey and Kondo Aki representing this. Last but not least, things that are not literal, but composition is meticulous, yet expressing in an abstract way, I should say the representation functions in an orthodox art has been also found in Kosugi Daisuke's sound installation exhibited in Ichinomiya because behind that we see and feel the COVID and the um, situation surrounding Ukraine and the sound makes it visual. And Tamura Yuichiro's uh, revitalizing the local industry and also Oizumi Kazufumi's power of representation across the different venues. Actually, when we see one artwork, we are being able to recall the previous artwork that we were watching and we get to see the connection between different venues. And for example, in the boundary between human beings and nature, Mary de Falani, Jackie Kalti, Karuti, Lothar Baumgarten, Ishiguro Kenichi, Jacobus Capone. These are the artists that I should mention. And from one artwork to another, we were being able to learn, review things, not only in literal things that are politic, but again, we were able to see presentation of politics without expressing it. Thank you. Shimabuku san, you have the floor. I'll be brief. Earlier I said people who passed away are still alive, and seeing the artists being exhibited, this time 10% are deceased artists, and I'm relieved to get to know this. And at the same time, well, because we are now in the COVID pandemic, uh, what we were worried about for us was what if the overseas artists can't come here? But at the end, we were able to welcome a lot of overseas artists, and this has made it made the exhibit very live, lively. And the remaining two artists that I recommended are having their works exhibited in Tokoname. And because I was thinking so much about DC's artists, and the two people I welcomed are very lively and jolly. We have adventurer Hattori Bunsho and photographer Ishikawa Ryuichi, and um, we summoned them. And as much as possible, I asked them to be on site at Tokoname. Well, we have to see how long they can stay. But yesterday they were in the venue too, and they were having some conversation with uh, people who visited them. And what was impressive was they said, if I stay in a big city, I'm not alive. It's just that I am not dead. And to be alive, I have to go to the mountains. He was, um, they were saying very interesting things. So I really encourage you to visit Tokoname. You will be probably be able to meet these two people. Thank you. Let's ask Fumiko Nakamura. Thank you. Out of the artists that I recommended, we have Endo Kaori who has her exhibit in Ichinomiya. She has been interested in textile and craft work. And this time at Ichinomiya, we have the wool fabric large-scale artwork being exhibited. 
And yesterday I walked through various artworks in Ichinomiya to find out that it was not just only Ichinomiya's fabric, but we I was able to find out Arimatsu's dyeing technique and um, art or technique from Southeast Asia and the weaved mat, mat called Tika, an Iranian mat, and Mary de Falani's weaving art using pandan leaf, New Zealand's Maori tribes fabric, Papua New Guinea's art, as well as the cotton from Chita Peninsula in Japan. And I noticed and realized that uh, different weaving methods from the world repeatedly appear in these artworks. Each manual technique are truly local and you get to see the uniqueness of the region. Now, when we have these various diverse art techniques from different parts of the world get together, well, in the past, you could have possibly distinguished this between center and peripheral, but now seeing various art techniques, you get to see that each is unique and local. At the same time, we also see some commonalities. They are all universal, and at the same time, they are connected organically. That's what I felt, and it made me very happy and glad. Thank you. Um, Keizo Maeda, you have the floor. I just came to Nagoya two days ago and I am not local to Nagoya, so I haven't had the opportunity to uh, look around the exhibit. And I had some time to see some of the artworks here in Aichi Art Center, so I want to spend more time moving forward to watch these artworks. Probably some of you have already um, seen many of them. Well, yesterday um, we had the rehearsal of, of Steve Reiche in a performance art center close to this and actually there is this window in the venue and well several windows are being opened for ventilation because of the pandemic and yesterday it was very hot and it's even hot today so I saw the sky the cloud and the townscape of Nagoya city but then somehow it re I recalled um, about Nagoya during the World War II because um, the city of Nagoya was heavily attacked. And of course, I come to Aichi, Nagoya on business many times, but perhaps it's my own obsession. I have this idea that um, the attacked city, especially in the Bay Area of Nagoya, where Mitsubishi Heavy Industries was located, so it makes me remind the devastated area hit by the airstrikes. Somehow it makes me imagine the burnt area of Nagoya. And on contrast, there's this blue sky and the art festival now being held here. Everything somehow overlaps in my mind. Well, these were what I was thinking walking the town yesterday. And, of course, because we have the art festival, people travel around, walk around from one venue to another. And I think that we can sense many things from the environment. Let's say, for example, an old aged architecture sandwiched by modern concrete buildings. It's just an ordinary scenery, but these somehow make me feel encounter, probably because of the art festival, to have some kind of new emotions or new encounter, and um, some kind of memory flashback happens in my mind. Perhaps this could be one of the meanings or significance to come to an art festival and spend your time. And that's what I've been thinking. And I look forward to see and appreciate various other work, artworks and look forward to see something unexpected. Thank you. It's high time. Perfectly. We have 
being able to carry out this panel discussion. Now, when I announced the still alive theme at first, well, we started then to throw pebbles into the ocean or started to plant seeds to the land. Well, that's how I allocated the creator team. There are some artists that I recommended and I chose as well. But at the same time, we had each of the creators to recommend and select the artists. And these artists started to prosper, to bloom, to come up with new works. And through the researches that we also carried out about Aichi, we ended up being able to create something beyond our expectation that was very interesting. And as Fumiko Nakamura mentioned earlier about the textile art, well, we were able to get various ideas and thoughts of different artists and creators forming warp and weft of a fabric and get weaved. At a glance, there could be so much information for you to understand, but um, please um, buy or purchase the multiple pass ticket, and I encourage uh, you to come and visit many times because you'll be able to get to see new connections. And when we think of I am still alive, well, we got the theme from this, and we have the still alive theme. Now, please think what this means for you, and look at the artworks of various artists and also the deceased artists' work that was made half century ago, and please think what kind of messages that you feel. We have now 72 days left, but I hope that you'll be able to comprehend and digest these artworks. Again, thank you very much today.